what's what I find interesting about Tesla, of course, is that it's been I've been using the word a lot doldrums, right? The stock has been flat. It's actually gone down a lot. There's excitement is gone. But it's precisely in these moments that you have to rem like remember what your thesis is, that Tesla is an AI company, it's an innovation engine. And it's actually now that you're seeing it play out in front of your eyes, in your mind it's slow. But if you think about how quickly they did the bot, the, De the Gen 2 that just dropped in December, the AI boom is very much something that shows you that the bot will be able to do useful work. It's almost like a, the confidence level that this is going to happen is so much so much higher than FSD or RoboTaxi. Now FSD version 12 has dropped. We'll talk a little bit more about that. And version 12 so far, the, the reactions are fantastic. It's still too early, but there is like at least, I did a show where I had at least eight videos of uh, edge cases that version 11 has never been able to solve by different users. And now they show that version 12 can do this. This is the real deal. And so it certainly looks like right now, when you look at it, the stock has fallen. There's no exciting milestones. I'm going to go through my milestone list here, but this is the moment when Tesla, you know, maybe not this year. I still believe it will happen this year. Many of, of us here don't think it's going to be this year that Tesla will actually show that. I think with, with Tesla, we're, this is, it's a dangerous thing. I, I'm, I've been long the stock. I continue to be long. I, I do, obviously I've entered into other, stocks. I've done that over the years too. I have a trade, I have trading positions and I have long positions where I really don't, um, don't touch them. Uh, but I have to say with, with Tesla right now, it's in this, it's in this, it's kind of in, they even said it, we're in between these, these two waves of growth okay. right now. And so you can, can pause. Get, you, Sorry that the two waves of growth is specifically talking about auto industry. It doesn't refer to the bot or AI or robot taxi. So go ahead. No, right, energy. I understand that. Yeah, I understand that. But I think it's all going to kind of be timed together. Um, and the question I would have is, even when the moment arrives, is Tesla going to be effectively able to tell the story? Because right now, when the moment arrived with auto vehicles, they sold them. Like they put them out there. There's a huge waiting list. They built them, they sold them, and they drove EV adoption. So the question is, is with V12, are they going to be able, are they going to be able to tell, craft that story and tell that story? I think they're hiring people. It looks like they're hiring some people in the background to be able to do that. That would be one question. The other thing I think there could be a speed bump in the beginning um, is just on the regulatory side. Uh, there's a lot of enemies of the company. There's enemies of the stock. There's enemies of the company. There's enemies of the, C I mean, this is just facts. I mean, this is not like, mm -hmm. so uh, it, 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 would it be smooth sailing, even if they have like the solution right in front of us, like it works, it's great. But then you're going to have people trying to gain this, you know, so I just think there's going to be a couple of speed bumps along the way. I don't know how to time them. I don't know how to do that. So that's why I, I continue to stay long in the name. But don't you, uh, Jeff, don't you concentrate on, on FSD here? Because one thing that gives me pause and where I feel the st stability is coming from is energy. We know already there is a lot of revenue that hasn't been recognized, but that is already, you know, piling up. So that is for me the element that will bring us from one wave to the other in a more stabilized matter. And I think it's, I mean, it, you would have had to time it. It couldn't have been better. Obviously, we, we would love this energy revenue having having it already recognized, but we know it's coming. So, uh, so, so that helps me for this transition and and the other thing is you're right nobody knows how to time it you know this v12 jet gpt moment can come today tomorrow in three months in in three years i hope not um but i have the fomo of being out at that moment right and i just feel like no i have been sitting here now for three years since march 2020 to be out at the moment that could come tomorrow or maybe not i i feel like you know that's yeah. that's too risky for me yeah and i'm saying the same thing too uh, I, I just, I, the question is, is are they going to be able to, to tell that story? Put it, I mean, if you think about the other AI stories out there right now, they actually started as marketing plays. They actually, they started with the CEO and they started as kind of like, you saw these commercials for like Copilot and Microsoft. It doesn't even work very well. And, and so, so the question is, is, is uh, I'm just going to challenge to Tesla. Like, are they going to be able to, like, once it's here, are they going to be able to tell the story? Are they going to rebrand? I mean, to me, a vehicle, a Tesla with full self-driving should be, almost be rebranded. It's almost like Model S AI or something. It's a, now you have an AI-powered vehicle. And I just, 
I don't know. I just don't know if they're up to that challenge of being able to tell that story. They're more more focused on which is the which is the great thing for us. Like they're focused on the engineering, the solution. My question is, are they able to tell the story when the when the time is actually here? And and then the other thing you have to think about is, um, I think they have a pretty good lead on FSD, um, but you know at some point you know there will be there will be footsteps and how how will they manage that? And then it, I go back. So if you think about energy. You think of these other things. Well, why aren't they telling the story? Like if there's all this revenue piling up, why wouldn't they put out uh, and why wouldn't they put out any guidance on it for the year? I mean, there's no guidance at all um, on energy. So I, I, there's things I get concerned about, but I think I do agree with all of you or most of you that it's a difficult thing to time. Yeah, and I mean on communication, you're right. We've always said that. I mean, they they could do a much much better. Um, way of communicating, but that was true in 2020, 21, 22 as well, right? And then the, the stock soared. So I, I'm not forgiving them because I, I wish they would. Now they have hired um, obviously a team now to to go into advertising, to to go into communication. Um, so I mean, th there is hope now for energy. You you have it in the numbers. I mean, if if you go into details into the earnings of of 2023 and especially Q4, you see exactly how much is piling up uh, in it. But you're right. If you're not not digging into it, uh, nobody will ever know about it. And the final thing I'll say is just the analyst community. Like we we spoke with Dan Ives, we spoke with others, and you can you can label them all one way or another. They're generally they're some pretty bright people. There's a spectrum in every group of people, right? In terms of, well, you know, but I mean, you know, he said like basically for every 20 people he talks to in terms of funds that he, he speaks with, maybe one of them brings up FSD. And so the question is, is, well, is Tesla telling that story to the analyst community? Is it very, is it clear to them? Is it clear to like where the revenue could come in? There's this stage of FSD and then there's eventually this stage of RoboTaxi. Is Tesla building up the story with that community? Or are they just like, we don't, you know, again, we don't care about it. We're just going to go work on the solutions. And when they're ready, they're ready. Um, but again, I, I, I would summarize it as, is when the moment's here, are they going to be able to tell the story and get the kind of uh, market impact that they deserve? And then secondly, I think there's going to be a couple of speed bumps before it goes to like to fully ramp up. But I'm, I'm pretty, again, I'm, I'm confident that they have the right economic solution and the right solution that, gets, that can volume scale. It's just, are you going to be able to tell that story and are we going to be able to get through these speed bumps uh, to get it out there? So uh, a lot of uncertainty. And you're completely We're, right with your concerns. You, you, let me just put that in. Because if FSD would have worked, let's say, in 2020, it was by far the only AI play then. Nobody would have called it AI, but it was you know, the most astonishing thing a car would drive by itself. Now it's sort of in the middle of this huge lake of AI news, some mm. of it worth the time and the attention and okay. most of it not, but it, it has become, you don't agree? Yeah, uh, no. I, no, and I, and I want to push back as well. Let, let me do it because it's me. <laughs> the, the story today is AI boom and the AI boom is large language generative la um, AI, which is right, language, but also vi vision, video. This is going to be the very first real world application of AI, right? This is the only application of AI. And even Jeff has been saying this for many shows now that even if you look at ChatGPT and Bard and the others or Gemini now, they make mistakes left, right, and center, but it doesn't matter because it's just, you know, it's a fun toy. Now it's very, not just a toy, it's very, very productive. I've been big on that. It's actually helping companies be more productive, but this is an actual real world utilization. It's gonna turn your car into a robo taxi in the future, FSD now, safer. So yes, it's, it's a very different thing. It's not just, oh, another AI story. I think it's big. No, I'm yeah. not saying it's not big. I'm I'm just the perception of people, the attention span of analysts, the attention span of the market. Will it be, you know, perceived as being the singularly best application of it? Yeah, and just to jump in real quick, I agree with a lot of everyone's points. Everyone knows my concerns. I've already talked about it. Um, but but get, getting to the to the AI piece, and you may not agree with this, but this is just the way I think about it. When you talk about like a Gemini, which I use it, it's getting better, or a Grok, or Copilot, or whatever you're saying, no one's life is in danger if it makes a mistake. 
you can be productive with that. And if it gives you a wrong error or something silly, you move on to the next one and you become more productive. And we've already heard about that at Microsoft. It's making companies more productive. We heard what NVIDIA is saying. People want this. They wouldn't want it in droves if it wasn't being um, productive. Amazon has talked about how it's making customers want to buy more because the experience is so much better. So that is starting to be proven out and, and those the money is starting to be generated. The problem with FSD, if they solve it, I don't think you need to really tell a story. It'd be nice to tell a story. It would support the stock. But if it's solved, the story will be told to the market because, okay, we're doing this, it's done, and, and, and the, the stock will take off. The problem is, is that regulations, one, Two, it can't be 99, it can't be, not, this thing has to be perfect. And I've talked about this a million times, but I don't think people appreciate it enough. If, if, if you're not perfect and people are on the roads and there's an accident here, an accident there, there is no way, and the public will spin it and the enemies like Jeff will set, like, talked about eloquently, will spin it and it will set the project back. It's not going to be easy for a car with no one in it just to be roaming around 24-7 doing whatever it wants unless it is full proof, like 10, 20, 30 times better than a human. And I don't know if that's six months from now, a year from now, or five years from now. And guess what? No one else knows either. I don't even know if Tesla knows that when FSD will be ready. And if you think that you know or, or Tesla knows, I think you're kidding yourself because I don't think anyone knows yet. If they're working on it, I think they're in the lead. I don't think anyone else is close to them, but it still can be a while before it's perfected and you do have those regulatory hurdles. To me, that just is common basic logic. And I don't know, that's just the way I think about it. Zander, you can so disagree with me, that's fine. You let's let's have Xander chime in, please. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so so uh, I I don't think Tesla's interested in telling any stories or uh, trying to convince the market of what they are actually doing, and uh, I I think it comes down to simple math. You have just go back to what Elon d discussed with the company. You're going to get units out, get these robots on the road, and you're going to push FSD to them when it's complete. So, so now, now there's something very interesting that's happened, and, and we, I mentioned this in Cyber Bulls. So now, uh, on our Tuesday uh, space, so you have Tesla rolling out uh, FSD 12 to randomized VINs where they have never done that before. They, they always sent it to uh, you know the really experienced users. I think that's an important thing to digest and to understand, like that's different. Why, why are they doing that? So when it comes down to you know telling the story, I think that Tesla will s do something very simple. I think they will push free FSD to, or make the offer to new per Purchasers, to existing purchasers, to subscribers or whoever to try it once it's ready. Really, their focus is, uh, you, you know, this, this shift into basically AI figuring out how to drive. That's really that that's all we need to focus on. The re reality is they are solving something that is incredibly complex. I, I just think about how you had, you know, we used to type. Uh, CD, uh, you know, to change a directory in DOS. You didn't have all of this virtual, there's graphics, none of this existed just 30 years ago. And you now have cameras that can tell a car, to, you know, which way to go. Just realize what Tesla is up to and, and, and look at some of the competitors. Now you, you're hearing about other companies that are going vision only. And, you know, so yeah, uh, right now the hardware picks and shovels wins with the GPUs and Tesla needs those GPUs, but I just tend to focus on what, what, is, what is Tesla doing? Are they looking to make their own GPUs without having to rely on NVIDIA, you know, take fate in their own hands? Is it gonna be perfect? Right out the gate? No, you you have the way that they're going to change uh, and manufacture cars and bring down the cost. Like what happens when the the, the fourth gen vehicle comes out uh, and it is just you know fifty percent less expensive? What's the take rate going to be on that? So for me, it's the, the that math of 
uh, uh, FSD and ensure the, the cars as well. But uh, I, I just I think, yeah. yeah. And, and well, if, I, I, if I may just add one thing for communication, Jeff, and I'm sure you will pick up on this one, is one thing that gives me really some uh, comfort is that we now see some of um, Tesla C-level executives more on Twitter, mm -hmm. more on LinkedIn, on other social media, participating in the discussion, bringing subjects to us whenever, you know, something is Rohan, it's Drew, a couple of them, it, it's Tom Chu. I do believe they, are, they know the lack of communication and the, the, you know, the need we all have for good information and, and understanding where they are in different developments. And, uh, and, and I think that's their way of addressing it. Is it conventional? Of course it's not, but that's Tesla, isn't it?